these things that uh, that we're talking about today. And we can live that way. Amen. Even in the world that we are in today, we can live that way. Thank you, Lord. The scripture tells us that we can, but it's it's something that we have to work for and we have to work on every day. And yes, Paul, amen. he tells us that in his scriptures. He says he has to do it every day. He has to bring his, right. his body under, under subjection every day. So if he did, how much more would we, Brother right. Raymond? We would have to... We have to check ourselves every single day. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. Amen. This goes all the way back to the beginning that we started on this. It convicts us of our sins. And then we repent. And then we make a decision to turn away from our sins and walk toward God. See, that's a decision that we, that we have to make. Now, when John the Baptist baptized the people in the wilderness, he said, this is what he told them. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me, one is going to come that's more powerful than I am. And he said, I'm not even worthy to bend, to bend down and unloose his sandals. That's what he said. That's what he said. He wasn't even worthy. So he's telling the people that there's one mighty that was coming. And he said, he will baptize you in fire, the Holy Ghost, and with fire. That's what he told the people. Now, John the Baptist was referring to who? Jesus. Jesus who would baptize the people with fire. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, and surrender our lives to Him, it does not stop there. It don't. If you stop it there, then you're going to go right back like, like you were before. So, as these lessons has been, it's telling us the steps that we have to go through, and we're still going to have to, you know, we're not through until He comes back and gets us. We're constantly having to work to keep ourselves where we need to be. The Holy Spirit then comes and lives in us. We no longer live, but Christ lives in us. That's what it says in the scriptures. He says, Paul said that. He says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We are a new creation in Christ. How many believes that? I know yes. How many believes that you are a new creation from what you used to be? I'm, oh, thank you, Lord. We are, we are a new creature. We have become something new. And that's what it's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. We no longer continue in our sinful ways, but we begin a new life. The day that you accepted the Lord as your Savior, that is your first day, really, of, a, of, a life, of your life, your new life. The Holy Spirit in us gives us the power to overcome and live a sacrificial life. Now, what does that mean, a sacrificial life? We have to sacrifice. We sacrifice. Uh, a lot of you, uh, we, you've sacrificed to come here this morning. It was very easy to stay home. As a matter of fact, I'll confess, I've had a real bad cold all week, I guess. And this morning, you know, when you get up in the morning, it's worse. So I got up this morning, I felt like the old saying is, I felt like something the cats had drug in and the dogs wouldn't have. That's how I feel this morning. That's pretty bad, I guess. And I told my husband, I said, if I was a normal person, I'd stay home. Bless her Lord. But I feel obligations. I feel an obligation to the Lord. 
Yes. So I'm here this morning, and I feel a whole lot better than when I started out this morning. I know Brother Raymond, he doesn't feel good. And I know Robert doesn't feel good. Sister Lil doesn't feel good. There's a lot in here. Charles doesn't feel good. But you made an effort to come this morning. Thank you, Lord. And God is going to bless that. Yes, He's not amen. going to overlook that. Amen. So that, you know why? Because you are a new creature in Christ. And He will bless. He will bless us. The Holy Spirit in us gives us the power to overcome all of these things and do what we're supposed to do. If the Spirit was not living in me, this morning I would be home. Yes. If the Spirit was not dwelling in me and driving me, I would be home this morning. Why does the Holy Spirit come and reside in us? The answer is because God wants to transform us into His image and His likeness. Can a fig tree come from an apple tree? No. No. A fig comes only from a fig tree. Similarly, we are born of Christ. We need to resemble Christ. We are the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit resides in us. Our lives and everything we do and say has to reflect the glory of the living God. A Christian is known by his fruit. That's how we are known. Is it possible that the encounter with the living God will have no effect in our lives? It's impossible. It's impossible. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives will be evident in the form of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, I'm going to read them together. I want us to look up here and read these together. But it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Praise the Lord. And I would like for you just to, uh, you probably have, memorize these. Memorize these things. So now what I want to do, uh, I want to break these down. And I won't tarry very long because there's nine of them. So, but I want, to tar I want to break these down and I want us to look at these individually. And, uh, See what the Lord has to say about those. Let's look at love. What made God send His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins on the cross? Love. What made Him do that? Love. It was His unconditional love Thank you, Jesus. for us. His unconditional love for us. God gave us his best. Yes, he did. He gave his best to us in Christ. And we are called to give our best Amen. to him. Why would we want to give him any less? Amen. He should have our best. Not because we have to, but because we want Amen. to. Amen. Because we want to. How many of you this morning, somebody took a big stick and they made you come to the house of God this morning. <laughs> but how many came because you wanted to? Every one of you came because you wanted to. Otherwise, you'd still be home in bed. Or something. But when the Holy Spirit resides in us, we are flooded with His awesome love. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It just floods you with His awesome love. Thank you. The love that we receive from the Father, we share on those around us. So if we've got that genuine love, then it's going to shine. It's going to come forth to others. 